family what's the word we are back thanks for being here um i want to check out this video and see what the story behind um these two entertainers are now we all know what's going on i really feel like it's just a friendly thing and with the way everything's going on you guys never know what exactly it is anyways uh let's see let's get the full story about drake and kendrick let's go are hate each other well at least one of them hates the other person while the other has tried many times to be friendly and squash things one rapper seemed to believe that they were actually friends while the other looked at their relationship as a business transaction after two weeks of research it's safe to say that one mc has lost every ounce of respect for the other you guys really liked my last video where I broke down all the subliminal disses from Drake's new album, so I decided to stick with a similar style. And in my last video, I, I asked you guys to hit the like button, which is something I don't usually do, but the video did really well, and I don't know if that's why, but just do me a favor and hit that like button again. Thanks. So when it comes to Kendrick... That's all we'd be saying, y'all. Just hit the like button. No matter if it's reactions or what, you're spending your time being here. Just hit the like button and drake they weren't always on bad terms back in 2011 drake had already blown up and kendrick had yet to release a major debut album now kendrick was definitely buzzing but he was far from the star that drake was even back in 2009 kendrick mentioned drake on a track where he pretty much admits that he thinks he's better Me and my girl split the bucket to kfc she listening to drake and all i can say is damn these is that much better than me no uh. That's crazy. That's how it be, though. The people around you won't even listen to your stuff like that. Until you get big, though. That me. Hendrick said that Drake was the first person outside of his team to hear Section 80, and that Drake was blown away by the project. I even found a 2011 tweet where Drake posted Kendrick's lyrics from ADHD. We never do listen unless it comes with an 808. Drake liked Kendrick's music so much that he asked him to be on his upcoming sophomore album, Take Care. Throughout the track, Kendrick talks about meeting Drake for the first time and how he was surprised that Drake wasn't fake like most of the music business. Hit me on the sailor, thought he was gonna sell me a fast word like the rappers I know. Kendrick outlines how Drake showed him a taste of what being rich and famous actually looked like. Sat down with a few drinks located where you can't see us. A white waitress on standby when we need her. On the track, Kendrick really battles with the idea of becoming famous as he's worried that it will change him for the worse. Yeah, like, damn, this next level that I'm going to, will I get caught up in the lifestyle and would that make me a breaky? And that was what the whole record was about. The next level of the lifestyle. Interesting. When I did the interlude. And I mean, even back then, we could see the difference in these two artists where Drake is talking about the Maybachs and his lavish life, and Kendrick is worried about his mental health and his, you know, his relationships, his friendships. It's interesting because just two or three years later, the dude did get depressed from just being in the industry. I didn't know you were suffering from depression. The way you said you was on the album. Like, yeah. Did, did the industry cause that? Not not the industry, just the change. And Drake only continues to show Kendrick more love by taking him and ASAP Rocky on his Club Paradise tour. This is my brother ASAP Rocky. This is my brother Kendrick Lamar. I'm on this motherfucking Club Paradise tour, matter of fact. My nigga Drake, TDE, high power in this you know? And Drake has always claimed to have fought with management to take these guys on tour because his label had other plans. You know, it's people I can put on here that the label wants me to put on here, but I fight for this one reason, man. Like I fight to promote what I love, you know what I'm saying? I, I fight to promote the music that I truly love, so. Drake would mention this again in 2016 on his track 4 p.m. in Calabasas. When he told me take an R&B nigga on the road and I told him no and drew for Kendrick and Rocky. However, Kendrick's superstardom quickly catches up with Drake as a year later, he dropped one of the best hip hop albums of all time, Good Kid Mad City. I used to be jealous of Vermin Afano. He was the one. Did he say Good Kid Mad City or Bad City? But that's funny he said that because I think he's in Los Angeles. Approach music and life in general. Really, money really don't make me. I'm learning that now. 
you know, that's not really my um, my peace of mind, having money. I love Alexa Chung's shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> you love the shoulders? Exactly. I just love her shoulders. She's you actually blushing as well. She's No doubt about it, they're just two different guys. Bruh. Next, we get a bit of an... That's not really my... What about it, Dirge? I love Alexa Chung's shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> you love the shoulders? Exactly. I just love her shoulders. She's yeah. actually... I just love her shoulders. I, I, I just love her shoulders. Come on, bruh. She's blushing as well. She's no doubt about it. They're just two different guys. Next, we get a bit of an inside look on how Kendrick actually sees Drake as a person when the legend himself, DMX, claims that he would love to beat Drake up. Man, it was like maybe seven years ago. Well, maybe like like 10 years ago. Well, you know, catch up to beat him up. <laughs> and just a few days later, Kendrick was asked about his thoughts on DMX's rant, and he thought it was hilarious, saying <laughs> that his entire tour bus nearly died of laughter. I wonder why these n in the front of the bus just cracking up, like hitting walls and shit, just crying. I'm like, what the fuck you niggas talking about? They mute, they stop laughing, right? I just hear X going off on a laptop. Just <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck going on? And he's like, yeah, he's going in right now. Mm. <laughs> now remember, Drake is pretty sensitive. So if, if he did see that, he probably felt a way about it. So the two would work together for the very last time on one of 2013's biggest hits, ASAP Rocky's Problems. Girl, I know you want that, dude. Girl, I'm Kendrick Lamar. But well, that was it. After that, you never see these two on a track together again. In 2013, things started to get a lot more competitive between the two because at this point, Kendrick was not just an up and comer, he had become that guy. Get a lot of accolades from your peers and the hip hop icons. Thank you. Thank you. I love Kendrick Lamar. Number one on that list, Kendrick Lamar, what's up? Uh, the, the hip hop savior, it seems like. Woo! And let's not forget, Drake is still Drake. He had a phenomenal year also. Shout out to Hamilton. Shout out to Toronto one time. Like the best rap album goes. And they said, take care. Oh my God. Let's go. Given the success of both artists, the media and fans started to debate who was better. And Kendrick started off the year with a bang when he was awarded MTV's hottest MC in hip hop. And we went through about 15 of them, narrowed wow. it down to 10. The 10 became five, the five became two. And you, Kendrick Lamar, are the hottest MC in the game, according to the MTV brain. And most of Kendrick's hip hop friends seem to be happy for him. I heard you're not happy about that. Nah, I wasn't until I found out who's number one. They made my man number one, K Dot. Yeah. Drake, so I'm straight with that. However, Drake was one person that certainly did not send any sort of congratulations to Kendrick. What about your rap peers? Did they call? I, I know it's kind of competitive, so did they say congratulations? A rap peers, um, I think Cole. Okay. Yeah, that's about it. And I mean, at this point, Drake's at least got to be thinking like, this guy's starting to become a problem. He's he's getting a little bit close now. And Kendrick's winning streak was just beginning, as two months later he cleaned up at the 2013 BET Awards, winning the best male hip hop artist over Drake. I came up in that same county building, food stamps. Welfare, Section 8. And this time, I did find a tweet from Drake where he congratulates Kendrick on the win. Congrats to Kendrick as well. Nothing was the same. With all that said, things were about to change. <laughs> August 12, 2013. Real quick, y'all. Do y'all think Drake's... Do y'all think he's sensitive? Do y'all think he's hypersensitive? It's something about this dude that just never sat right with me. I like your shoulders. I just love her shoulders. Was a special moment for hip hop. To this day, it still stands out as one of the most exciting things to happen in the last decade. On Big Sean's control, Kendrick let everyone in hip hop know just how competitive he was when it came to that number one spot. We hear you know the answer. It's all right, y'all. Do not have premium. Of course. Just take this time to like the video. All right. Hit us with another one. Anyway, like the video. Here we go. With the same because I'm rhyming with, but this is hip hop and the you know what time it is. And they 
give it up for Big Sean because to me, he had one of his career best verses, but it just got overshadowed because of Kendrick's verse. I said, fuck trying and not doing, cause not doing is something a nigga not doing. This hip hop is competitive, but I am a competitor. Wait, sorry. Nobody had a problem except for Drake. I just like, I don't know, it, it just wasn't real to me. It's like, I, I saw him after that and it was just like, love so it's like was that real or was that just like for the people you know what no, i mean i like, think it's a sparring kind of sport yeah but you know at the that. same time it's like you know then let it be real then you know i mean because those were harsh words right so it's like <laughs> what did i just ask y'all don't just you can't just say that and then see me and be like yeah man what's up pretending like nothing ever happened like, that's not real and this right here is a perfectly good example of why people call drake soft and emotional you can't act this way and then sit back and wonder why people are labeling you as such. Like, this is this is why. And it's interesting because when Drake came into the game, he seemed to understand that competition came with the genre. It's, it's a great thing, though, to be competitive with those guys because you're always pushing yourself. I mean, And look, Drake was not a rapper that you could just push around. He did go toe-to-toe -to -toe with people before. Back in the day, a Toronto rapper by the name of Aristo seriously tried to end Drake's career, and it didn't end well for this guy. And it's the room of resolution, I'm finishing it in here. If I copy button flow, you mimicking his career. It was good riddance, it was lights out, it was a body, <laughs> and that's what it was, man. And that's why, good riddance, and, it, and what happened? Good riddance, right? Bye. I remember when this dropped. Bye. Because it was all over the hip hop blogs in Canada. And yeah, we did have hip hop blogs in Canada in 2009. They did exist. With all that said, Drake dropped Nothing Was the Same, and we get to hear the first subliminal shot for Kendrick. On the track titled The Language, Drake immediately starts out with a shot. I don't know why they've been lying, but your shit is not that inspiring. So when Kendrick's control verse dropped, Drake stated on multiple occasions that he did not find the verse impressive, that he thought it was for shock value, and that it would soon be forgotten. But it was it was real cool for like, you know, a couple weeks. But like, if I asked you, for example, like, how does that verse start? <laughs> One of Drake's more notable claims was that Kendrick had a great first album, but he questioned whether or not he could do it again. And as far as Kendrick goes, like, I can't wait to see what he does because now it's time to show and prove. And, and consistency is, it's been one album. Consistency is like, you need more than one album. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's mm. time to show and prove. And Drake claimed that he was all about putting out memorable bodies of work as opposed to creating moments. When it comes to competition, I'm just, I'm, I'm more worried about consistency. I'm more worried about bodies of work. However, Drake continues to send some more shots. Okay, they nigga, that's talking. Excuse me, this wax, y'all. Anyway, how do you beef with a dude that got Ghost Riders? Anybody? Somebody? That shit just to get a reaction. Again, Drake refers to Kendrick as someone that wrote the control verse to get attention. I am the kid with the motor mouth. I am the one you should worry about. A motor mouth is defined as a person who talks quickly and continuously often without considering what they're saying. In this case, someone that raps fast. Is clearly about Kendrick. Talking that shit with your back to me, just know it always get back to me. So outside of the DMX comment, there were some other interviews where Kendrick had laughed at Drake's expense. I heard about you touring with Drake. Yeah. I was like, that's dope, that's dope. And I was like, well, I hope it doesn't hang with Drake too hard because yeah, yeah, yeah. Drake isn't exactly doing what we thought he would, what many of nerdy backpackers like myself thought he might be doing a few years ago. Right. Mm. And honestly, man, at this point, I would not be one bit surprised if Kendrick said something behind Drake's back and it got back to him. Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. At the 2013 BET Hip Hop Awards, Kendrick decided to throw some gas on the fire. He went into the awards with the most nominations at 14, and Drake was a very close second with 13. However, Kendrick would be the man to come out on top, winning Lyricist of the Year, MVP of the Year, Album of the Year, and Feature of the Year. Drake also came out with a handful of awards for Best Hip Hop Video, Track of the Year, and People's Champ. However, it would be Kendrick again that stole the show. 
Yeah, and nothing been the same since they dropped control and tucked the sense of the rapper back in his pajama clothes. Oh. Ha ha, jokes on you. High five. I'm bulletproof. Best in <laughs> subliminal. Wow. I like bro better when he raps at a slower tempo, all that fast shit. I can't listen to. I really only felt like this last um track he came out with, we was talking about the darter and really when at the soul of Drake, listen. That felt like the first diss track to me. That's just in my ears and eyes and mind and whatever. That's how it should be. Don't nobody want to have to think, think, think. Like, man, this is beef. Like, but then again, some people like it. Sounds like Jay-Z here. It's a very Hove-like thing to say where... He's just completely sunning Kendrick. So it's been known that Kendrick puts on heavy for the West Coast, claiming that he's the king, but Drake refers to him as his son because Kendrick went on his first big tour with Drake, and of course they had some shows in California. At the time, even Kendrick admitted that he was not used to these large crowds. The transition of me doing the 2000 venues I've been doing back then, it's, it's a little sketchy for me doing this 10,000. I got to really work some magic. I even found a Kendrick tweet from 2012 when he was on tour with Drake, where he says, finally home, LA, club paradise. Let's see what happens tonight. And if a nigga said my name, he'd have high shit. But if I say that nigga name, he's... As I'm being baited, and I'm not going to fall. Jordan doesn't have to play pickup to prove that he can play ball. Mm. No offense. Now, at this point in the story, we're about to witness one of the biggest upsets in Grammy history. At the 56th annual Grammy Awards, Kendrick lost the hip hop album of the year to Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. And rightfully so, people were outraged. Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. All you got to do is look at Pharrell's face because it says it all. He's just trying to get <laughs> off the stage as quickly as possible. Like, why? Why did they get me to do this? And Macklemore, feeling the heat, decided to text Kendrick afterwards and say that he felt he should have won and that he got robbed. And it would have been a nice gesture if he didn't take a screenshot of the text and post it on social media for everyone to see. He had already blown up, think so, and just a... I bet you he didn't say that on stage either. It don't mean nothing behind the scenes. Then you try to post it for the world to see. My bad, I got out the video. Hungry, so he's going to do what he has to do, like the BET cipher, but again, it's not enough for me to go. I have to realize I'm being baited and I'm not gonna fall. Robbed everybody, we all need text messages. Now you guys tell me, does Drake seem like he's defending Kendrick in this article, or does it seem like he's salty because he's not in the mix. At this point, the feud dies down for about eight months, and Drake even had some very kind words for Kendrick at his OVO fest when he brought out J. Cole. And while you all got your phones out, I want to shout out my nigga Kendrick Lamar. Shout out to Kendrick. Kendrick was on my album. People that mattered understood it, and for the people who didn't, they don't matter. The people that respect it, you know, was, was you know, people that knew the deal. Yeah. What's the important people? <laughs> that respect and knew what it was and, and you know people that don't respect it obviously they just people that don't get it and, and you know really didn't matter and again kendrick claims that the chances of seeing him and drake go head to head is slim to none because they're two different artists it's just a whole nother dynamic i can't see myself uh going bar for bar with drake you know we with two different type of artists you did you eat drake <laughs> I'm argue that. And I honestly feel like this is just Kendrick downplaying Drake as not being on his level. I don't think he respects Drake. I don't think he really ever respected Drake. And there's some underlying meaning behind this when he keeps saying it. Would Drake be somebody you would like to have some fun with? Nah, I, I, I couldn't. We come from two different worlds, mm. two different backgrounds. I, I really don't see that uh, playing out, you know, as, as entertaining. Maybe to, you know, the people listening, you know, but not for myself. Keep in mind, Kendrick was classified as the savior of hip hop. He was embraced by everyone just for the art, whereas someone like Drake really had to go to distance to prove himself. 
And even then, he could never win over the fans that admired a certain level of lyricism. Many consider Drake to be a pop star, and I feel like Kendrick is saying this without really saying it. Just hold on, we're going home. However, next Drake drops his surprise mixtape, if you're reading this is too late, and on that project, he had some more shots for Kendrick. They gon' say your name on them airwaves, they gon' gonna compare drake and kendrick anymore because they're not even playing the same sport right now mm. kendrick is in his own league and comparing these projects makes zero sense it's apples to oranges drake's project was great for club djs gym playlist cruising in the car whereas kendrick's album touched on real world issues was chanted during protest and is looked at today as one of the greatest hip-hop albums of all time However, Drake wasn't done as he left. Wow. What event was that? I never caught that. Wow. Finally dropped his long awaited album by surprise as well. Uh, and when I wake up, I recognize you looking. However, Drake was during protest and is looked at today as one of the greatest hip hop albums of all time. However, Drake wasn't done as he let another one go on the game's track 100. I will have a On July 22nd, 2015, Meek Mill took to Twitter to expose Drake for having ghostwriters. 10 bands, 50 bands, 100 bands. Drake is based. Don't just take classes. I hope I don't have no issue with these copyrights because dude got a lot of commercials in his and it's the original. But it'd be my luck, y'all. They hit me with some copyright shit. And yeah, let's get it. I know what you've been up to, buddy. I'm not going to say anything, but I know. With all that said, as everyone knows, Drake responded to Meek Mill with a now legendary diss record <laughs> back to back. Back to back like I'm Jordan 96, 97. Drake just one month later on Dr. Dre's Compton album. But still I got enemies giving me energy, I wanna fight now. Subliminal sending me all of this hate, I thought I was holding the mic down. In this one, Kendrick references Drake's recent track, Enemies. Got enemies, got a lot of enemies. Kendrick is once again talking about how Drake keeps going the subliminal route, which at the end of the day is really no different from what he's doing, but he didn't stop there as he did it again on another song from the same album. They lied for the very I shouldn't have held back. I shouldn't have held back. And at this point, Kendrick finally gets his well-deserved moment at the Grammys, winning five awards, but more importantly, he finally clinched the best rap album category mm. with To Pimp a Butterfly. Oh, glory to God, that's for sure. Drake also racked up a bunch of accolades in 2015. If you're reading this, it's too late. Broke Spotify's record for 17.3 million streams in its first week. Hotline Bling had dominated the charts. And his collaborative album with Future also did crazy numbers. And I mean, even at this point, anything Drake touches is going to do numbers. Next, we get some inside information that this situation between... Oh, oh, that was hard. It could have got really ugly. Former NFL player turned commentator Mark in its first week. Hotline Bling had dominated the charts, and his collaborative album with Future also did crazy numbers. And I mean, even at this point, anything Drake touches is gonna do numbers. Next, we get some inside information that this situation between Drake and Kendrick could have got really ugly. Former NFL player turned commentator Marcellus Wiley wouldn't say any names but said that years earlier, he interviewed one of the two rappers and they completely went off on the other. Uh, <laughs> the Drake Kendrick beef, uh, when it was really wow. starting to brew. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was on uh, Sports Nation at the time and we taped the interview with one of the people and that one person went in on the other person. Oh. And we were ready to let this go, uh, but then that one person's team made sure that didn't get out. Yeah, so. Marcellus was- That was Drake. That was Drake. I guarantee you that was Drake. Cause they really not messing with Kendrick and no mute and no sports. 
quoted in a DJ Vlad interview as saying that the person went so hard in this interview that it could have brought the beef to the heights of 50 Cent and Ja Rule. And you gotta keep in mind, Marcellus is trying to sell a book, and he claimed that in this book, he would expose everything that was said and who said it. And I bought the book. I spent the $13.99. I didn't read it. I searched it. And here's what he had to say. We even got Drake on tape talking made. What the hell did I just tell y'all? And he likes to make his team go back afterwards and kind of make you do certain things with the footage your shit about Kendrick during an interview. Of course, after watching the interview, Drake's publicist wouldn't let us air that tape, but we still got it. Take my word for it. So that's it. That is the big expose. Like, I too was cheated, hoodwinked, bamboozled, and led astray by Marcellus Wiley. Now, we need to take any self-promotion tactics with a grain of salt, but the date surrounding this thing is very interesting. Kendrick drops the control verse on August 12, 2013. In a Hot 97 interview on September 24th, Drake was very bitter. And the very next day, September 25th, Drake appears on ESPN. And you guys could tell me what you think, but to me, I believe this story. I believe that Drake did this 100%. I personally I enjoy it. making like great music and bodies of work over like being the talk of Twitter for like five days, you know. However, in 2016, <clears throat> one man dominated the charts and that was Drake smashing record after record, pumping out hit after hit. Views sold 1 million in its first week and went on to become quadruple platinum that year. He had several number one records such as Work with Rihanna, For Free with DJ Khaled, and One Dance with Wizkid. One Dance actually became Spotify's most streamed song ever, and Spotify also announced that Drake was the most streamed artist of 2016. Basically in 2016, Drake just dominated. And speaking of For Free by DJ Khaled, Drake actually mentioned Kendrick on that song. They like your boy from Compton said. You know this dick ain't free. One of the most direct shots at Drake to date. Tiptoeing around my name, nigga, you lame. And when I get at you, homie, don't you tell me you were just playing. There on this top mm. five list, but more recently on More Life, he claimed that he was number one on that list. I know I said top. Her career is. Oh, my mama. Oh. Bruh. <laughs> something on drake something scathing something that drake doesn't want to see exposed we've already seen drake a couple times now try to dead this thing there's more coming but yeah kendrick keeps going and kendrick seemingly mocks drake's style of music on his song god you feel some type of way then? Ah, ah. but kendrick had proven time and time again that he could have commercial success and be conscious at the same time at this point, he had three cohesive projects under his belt, all of which were extremely successful. I'm African American. Rolling Stone, Kendrick gave his two cents on the situation. It depends what arena you're putting yourself in. I called myself the best rapper. I cannot call myself the best rapper if I have a ghostwriter. If you're saying you're a different type of artist and you don't really care about the art form of being the best rapper, then so be it. Make great music, but the title, it won't be there. Mm. And no matter how you slice it, the dude is not wrong. To be Facts. the best rapper, you need to write your bars. I would be lying if I said that when I found out that Drake had ghostwriters that I didn't look at his music differently. I still listen to his music, but even now, when he says something dope, I got this, this little yeah. voice in the back of my head that says, He didn't write yeah, that. Yeah, it's dope, but did he write it? There However, Drake attempts to keep it friendly again by tipping his hat to Kendrick when Damn outsold More Life by over 100,000 copies. Amazing to see our music moving. A fan had also commented, get Drake, Kendrick, and J. Cole on the same record, and Drake liked the comment. Now, I hope at this point you guys can see the theme of Drake trying to squash it. And Kendrick seemingly responds to Drake's praise on his track All the Stars with I'm going to tell y'all all I see. Drake realized he had a monster next to him, a beast. He couldn't tame it, so he had to join it. Point blank, period. 
that's really all it looks like to me. And I really think Kendrick is ahead of 